everyone, this is Amanda, and I'm Amanda's Booktopia. If you're new here, welcome, and if not, welcome back. And today, I'm here out in Barnes & Noble with my awesome friend Dana, my fiancé Rick. And so, I actually got this package today from the lovely Karina from She Dreams and Words. I will link her Instagram down below. She gifted me a book. I have no clue what it is. So I plan on opening it and do and then we're going to do a reading vlog because I want to share all my reactions to everything. So now we're going to open this and see what it is that she got me. Um, there's, oh, there's gift notes. Let's see what she said. She said, thank you for your love and support, Amanda. I think you'll enjoy this mafia dark romance. Ooh. And hopefully even find a new book boyfriend in Tristan Kane. Love you. Happy reading from Karina. Very, very sweet of you, Karina. I can't wait to see what Mafia Romance this is, because I love Mafia Romance. So. Ooh, The Predator by Rue Nix. I put this on my Amazon wish list because Karina loved it, and the girls are, were all reading it, so I'm like, I want to try it out too. So cool. I'm very excited to read The Predator and find out what it's all about. So. I will probably start this later when I get home and I will let you know all my thoughts. Today is Wednesday and I started reading The Predator last night at, when I got home from Barnes & Noble and I have gotten five chapters in. I'm about to start chapter six and so far I'm actually really enjoying the main character Morana, I think her name is, uh, Morana. I really like how she's so brave and she has that badass attitude and she's all, I love how strong she is and I don't know what to think about Tristan just yet because it's fairly early and I don't really know much to judge him on except that he is very odd. Maybe because he's used to the way he is because of who he is. For those who have read The Predator will know what I mean. But so this is a mafia story. And so Tristan's on one side is he's a part of one whole area of a mafia family. And Marana is on a whole different mafia family from Tristan. So the two of them end up having to work together so to speak, and in order to get something accomplished that happened. So she has to get things fixed, and so they have to work together. And it's a very interesting, dark mafia romance so far. I can see the sparks flying already. <laughs> um, I don't think they really like each other all that much as of yet. But I could kind of see why, because they're two from, from completely two different opposite Mafia families. So, I don't have a lot of thoughts and feelings just yet, but I do really like Marana, and I'm definitely looking forward to seeing how this all plays out. And once I get to a good enough part where I can tell you more thoughts, I definitely will. So I'm going to go back to reading, and I will fill you all in later. I am... Just about to start chapter 12, and boy, does this book, it's heavy, <laughs> with lots of mature elements. There's definitely a little bit of spice going on here between Marana and Tristan. I forgot his name for a second. <laughs> um, so definitely a lot of spice there. And then there's some really hard stuff going on between Marana and her father. Her father is not a nice person. I do not like him one bit. I can't stand him. Um, we're probably meant to not like him the way um, he's for the way the author portrays him. He is an awful person. Like just awful. Some of the stuff that he's done to his daughter is just absolutely terrible. So it's pretty heavy in that aspect because of some of the stuff that he does. I'm going to try to keep this spoiler free as much as possible. 
Um, I definitely hope that Marana's like finally able to get out of her father's life once and for all at some point because she just needs to get away from him point blank. It like it's a really terrible situation that, that she's in and honestly I feel for her. She's trying to be as strong as she possibly can while facing some really hard choices and living a life she didn't really actually want. So it's definitely <clears throat> a dark read so far. So I definitely feel bad for her. And I'm about to start chapter 12. I'll try and get some more reading done today because well, technically, I'm already on page 193, which is the start of chapter 12. How many pages are actually in this book? There's actually 357 pages. So who knows? I might still get this done today. That would be great, because tomorrow, 72 hours in the reading nook starts, and... I want to try and get as many books in as possible. That will be another vlog that I will be doing for you guys. So keep an eye out for that. So I'm going to try my darndest to get this done today. I do have a couple things going on tonight. I have a meeting for my advocacy group that I'm a part of. And then I have bingo right after that. So after bingo, I'll be back up and reading and I'll give you all my reactions when I'm able to because this is one heck of a read and I cannot wait to finish it and give you all my th final thoughts. So today is Friday. The... What's today's date? Well, I started this vlog on Tuesday. Today's Friday. I did not do an update yesterday on Thursday. And fortunately, um, I didn't get a lot of reading done. So I didn't feel like it was worth it to mention anything. However, I did manage to finish, while at work, the audiobook of Divine Rivals. Well, I listened to most of the rest of the audiobook. And then I finished it up um, last night with a little bit that I had left. And I finished the audio along with physically reading the rest of the book. I didn't really have that much left. From the majority of the book, I listened to the audio, though. And I really, really enjoy this. And so for those that don't know, which I'd be surprised if you didn't know about this book, because it's been making its rounds on BookTube and BookTok, I'm sure, and Bookstagram. <laughs> but this is a historical fantasy with um, this boy and girl who are both working on this newspaper together and she ends up sending letters that she to her brother and her brother's not getting the letters it's the other guy that she works with and then like a romance kind of develops between the two of them and this was a very enjoyable read for me I did like it however I wish it was more world building and the one thing I, I wasn't crazy about was the info dumping in the dialogue. A lot of the times I don't mind it, depending on how the story's going, but in this case, I felt like they put everything that you're supposed to know into dialogue, and it wasn't really... Sh it was telling rather than showing. And that's the only reason why I wasn't completely crazy about this book, was because every... like, the historical part of like knowing about the gods and stuff was just like told to Iris and there wasn't really a lot of fantasy going on in the um in this so I ended up giving it four stars just because I felt there wasn't enough world building and not enough fantasy but overall it was still a pretty good story so it gets a decent four stars for me I am interested in reading Ruthless Vows because it's a continuation of the story and I want to know what happens next because of the way things ended. I'm like, I need to know what happens. So I'll be definitely getting the second book, most likely from Book of the Month because it's the cheapest way for me to get it. <laughs> 
So that's the way I'm going to do it. So I finished this last night. And then 72 hours and the reading nook started at 6 p.m. And I ended up not reading anything else after Divine Rivals. However, I did spin the wheel already, like, the night before. So that was, like, was it Wednesday night? or Yeah, I think it was Wednesday night that I spun the wheel, like, early. And I ended up getting most used... Oh, well, what I did was I decided to stay in my comfort zone because there's two wheels, one for in your comfort zone and one for out of your comfort zone. I decided to stay in my comfort zone, and then I came up with most used format. And so since I was already reading The Predator, I just decided to stick with it and continue it for that. And I am currently on page... Whoa. Um, 230. And I got the majority of it done already. So there's not too much left for me to finish. Only about this much. So there's like how many pages again? 357. That's not too bad. I could probably knock this out today. I mean, I got plenty of time before I have to meet Ray later. Because when he gets off of work, we're going to Starbucks and to dinner with friends. So, <clears throat> I definitely want to finish this today, before then. And I am certain I can. And then, after I finish that, I want to spin the wheel again. And see what I could get. I know I did um, in my comfort zone last time. I'm thinking of sticking with the same wheel again because I want to try and get as much reading done as possible today. And whatever I don't do will carry over into tomorrow. Because you could spin the wheel, um, like you could change up what wheels you want to do each day. Um, but once you pick a wheel, you have to stick with it for the whole day. So, I. Most likely, I'll probably be staying in my comfort zone this weekend. Just because that's what... The majority of my books are not exactly out of my comfort zone. They're pretty much all in my comfort zone. The only ones that are not are my um, graphic novels. Yeah. The graphic novels are the only ones that are not in my comfort zone. But the rest of this pretty much... I mean, the rest of the books that I have pretty much stay in my comfort zone. So I tend to pick books that are like in that zone most of the time. So as soon as I finish this, I'll be coming back and spinning the wheel with you guys. So I'm going to get right back into reading and finish this book. It is now afternoon. I started reading, um, well trying to finish up this morning. I just finished The Predator and oh my god, all of the feels, so many feels. Like, we finally get background on Tristan and why he is when he is, and oh my god, it's so heartbreaking. <laughs> and I feel for him, I really, really do. And what he's been through, and now Marana has a better understanding of him. And just, wow, that was intense. I don't even know, like, how to rate this right now. I haven't quite decided. Because it was a one heck of a ride. I mean, everything Marana goes through, and then we find out more about Tristan, and it's like, damn. <laughs> I need the next book in the series. I need to know what's going to happen next. I'm definitely adding the second book to my Amazon wish list, for sure. So I want to continue the series and see where it goes. Because this is, like, dark, twisty... You never know what's going to happen next. <laughs> These are probably the most unpredictable characters I have ever read. And that's what makes it so much fun. Because <laughs> you never know what's going to happen next. And Marana and Tristan, they're like the ultimate power couple. I cannot wait to see them finally get together. Like, finally, finally. Because, well, if you've read the book, you understand like how the ending Makes you feel like, you know, there's potential. And I'm really hoping, you know, everything works out the way it should. Because Tristan is probably one of the most heartbreaking heroes I have ever read. Besides Dominic from One Last Rainy Day by Kate Stewart. 
If you haven't read that series, that's a necessity. <laughs> but this, Tristan, reminds me so much of Dominic. It's just, it's heartbreaking. <laughs> I was like tearing up and stuff. Um, this might end up being a five star, if not more. <laughs> Because it just reminded me so much of Dominic from One Last Rainy Day, and it's just, it's tough. I don't know where to go from here. <laughs> I mean, it was all the feels, everything you could possibly imagine in this book. Like, if you, if you want a dark mafia romance, this is a book for you. Because it does get pretty dark. Especially Tristan, <laughs> once you get to know, you know, his background. That's probably one of the most devastating backgrounds that I've read. <laughs> From, like, pretty much any book. Like, just wow. I, I mean, it explains so much in the way he acts, the way that he does in this book. And makes so much more sense now. And now I need to know what's going to happen. I need the next book. I... I don't know if I can wait much longer. I might have to buy the second one. Even though I'm trying not to. Because I already have a good size stack of books I've already completed in February. But I need the next book. I need to know what's going to happen. I need more Tristan in my life. Tristan might end up being one of my ultimate book boyfriends along with Dominic. <laughs> I need more. <laughs> um... I don't know how to like, I just don't know. <laughs> I mean, this was everything and more. I cannot wait to get the next book in the series because I am most definitely getting it. Don't know when, but very soon, hopefully. Because this was everything and more. And I need more Tristan in my life, so I guess we'll put it that way. And now it's time to spin the wheel for... I in my comfort zone for 72 hours in the reading nook and we're gonna pull that up because I need to f figure out what book I'm gonna read next and I don't know if anything could come close to what I just read with the predator but we're gonna give it a go let's see what happens so I'm gonna have the spinning wheel on my phone so we're gonna spin the wheel And it says the little triangle eats the big one. So I think this is less than 300 pages. Cool. That's great. You want to know why? <laughs> I have the perfect book I, want, I was saving for this weekend in particular. And because you want to do less than 300 pages... This most definitely has less than 300 pages. And that is There Are No Saints by Sophie Lark. I believe it has, let's see, 258 pages. Yep, definitely three, under 300. And I have heard amazing things about this duology. And then I know it's dark. And I believe there's a lot of spice in it. Um, I read Sophie Lark before, enjoyed her writing for the most part, so I am very excited to dive into this one and see where it takes me. <laughs> I'm hoping I'm going to love it and I'll want to get the second one in the duology. Um, yeah, it's called The Sinner's Duet. So we're starting with There Are No Saints and we will go from there. I will keep you guys updated on how this is going. And I dropped a book. <laughs> Good job, Amanda. <laughs> um, so I am going to go on back to reading and I will keep you guys updated. Today is Saturday. I finished There Are No Saints late last night. I think I stayed up till around 1 or so, maybe 1.30, finishing this book. And it was definitely an enjoyable story. I gave it four stars. I love the majority of the book and the toxic relationship between Cole and Mara. It was definitely a heck of a time. 
Um, the reason why I gave it four stars and not a full five stars, it wasn't really a favorite because of this scene near the end of the book where it was supposed to be like a spicy scene. However, the spicy scene for me, uh, I had an issue with the fact that um, there was no consent and that you know, he kind of just took advantage of her while she was, um, I guess, and cuffed. And even though she said multiple times no to a few things, he did it anyways. And in that lifestyle, you're supposed to be able to say no and they stop entirely. Even if you have a safe word. And he, and like... I mean, she didn't have a safe word. They didn't even talk about what was going to happen before they went into it. So I kind of had an issue with the fact that he didn't talk to her about her limits before he just went ahead and did it and took advantage of her while she was in that state and didn't discuss with her fully about what this actually means. And, like, like she didn't consent to some of these things. And she just went ahead and did it without her permission. And that's the part that really bugged me the most. However, the rest of it was still a good story. So, I still recommend that um, There Are No Saints for the people who like dark romances. And it was because it was still a good story. Just that one part really bugged me. Like, I feel like you need to have consent in all areas before you just do something but if someone explicitly says not to do something you should not be doing it and he took advantage of that so that bugged me that's why this is not a five star but we are going to spin for our next book now i have a spin email all set to go so we're going to stay in my comfort zone for the rest of the weekend so I'm going to go ahead and spin the wheel. And we've got another one that's less than 300 pages. Awesome. I wanted to finish this other book I was reading before, except it's 399 pages, so it's not less than 300. However, I have an idea. And I found the perfect book for this prompt. I got Every Heart a Doorway by Shauna McGuire. McGuire. And I've heard amazing things about this series. I believe it's like portal fantasy where characters go into other worlds. And this is definitely less than 300 pages because it is a total of 171. So it's really short. A little novella. It's a, like a novella series, basically. And I've always wanted to try this because I've heard so many amazing things. I don't have any others in the series, so I wanted to try out the first one and see if I like it before I buy a whole bunch. Because if I don't like it for any reason, I don't want to have to like worry that I spent money on books that I'm not going to read and have to get rid of. So, instead of wasting money, we're going to... Try this first one and see what I think. And then we'll go from there. So I'm very excited to see how this one goes. Because I've heard amazing things. And I cannot wait to see if I like it. Because so many people love this series. So this will be a fun time. It is now 2.39 in the afternoon. And I have finished Every Heart of Doorway. This is a portal fantasy for those that don't know. And the characters are very different. Not what I expected, for sure. And it started out very weird for me. I could not understand most of the things that they were saying. Because in this world, they have like different names for directions. And like, some of them were saying. Or part of nonsense or logic or whimsy, wicked, all kinds of weird things. So I had a hard time getting into it at first. However, once I got to the middle of it, 
um, it got so much better. Like, it started doing thrillery stuff. Like, someone is killing people in the school. And I'm like, okay, I'm here for it. <laughs> and so, it ended up being so much better. Like, by once I finished it, I guessed who it was. Um, like, the second, like towards the middle of the second half of, of this and when I found out I was right I'm like cool I got it right <laughs> but I enjoyed my time with it for sure I am definitely interested in continuing the series because this was one heck of a time started out weird but it definitely got so much better and I really enjoyed the rest of it so I will be putting the next one on my wish list because I want to know what happens next <laughs> like what else is going to happen in this world it was very interesting i definitely enjoyed it so i ended up giving it four stars um because of the weird beginning but the last half killed it for me i love the rest of it so i definitely am very excited for the rest of the series and now that i'm done with this book we are going to spin for my next one and find out what we're gonna read next so I have the wheel pulled up right here I'm gonna hit the spin in the middle and we've got less than 300 pages again <laughs> how do I keep getting the same prompt this is the third time I got this prompt um, Again. I'm allowed to respin if I want to during this 72 hours in the reading nook. But if I do, I only get three allotted. And since I've had this two times in a row, I'm thinking I might try and spin again for something a little bit different. Because I want to do something different. So uh, we're going to spin again. And we've got. author you've read from before cool um i wanted to go do some digging i was kind of hoping it'd be a different book i mean a different prompt because there's another book that i'm in the middle of i wanted to finish however she, that book would not work for this prompt because i've never read the that author before so i need to pick one that i've actually read before so let me go see what i could find so i am back and i have found the book i decided to go with this could have worked for the less than 300 pages prompt also, but I wanted something a little different. Even though I decided for the book I'm going to read is Desperate Measures by Katie Robert. I have read the first, th yeah, the first three of her Dark Olympus series and really love that series. I still have more of her books in that series I have not yet read. However, I want to fit in as many short books as I can over this weekend so I can read a whole ton <laughs> because I want to go through as much books as possible while I'm doing this reading challenge. And I decided to go with the Katie Robert book. I love her books. I love her style of writing. They're always spicy and always a great time. And I know Desperate Measures is a dark retelling off of Aladdin I believe and this one yep yeah, it's Aladdin because Jafar is like the main villain in Aladdin so they're reimaginings basically or retellings of the villains so this is like the first of the Wicked Villains series by her and I love retellings and I think this would be a great time and Definitely spicy, I'm sure, because all of her books are spicy, and I am down for spice. <laughs> and I probably won't pick this up right this second, because I'm going to go get ready and get some Starbucks and get some dinner from Moe's. And as soon as I get back, I'll be diving right into this one, because I want to read as much as I can while I can, while I'm doing this challenge. And... I am very excited to read this one.
they have not yet read any of her Wicked Villains books. And this is the first one. So I thought I'd try it out, see if I like it just as much as her Dark Olympus series. And if I do, I might end up having to get more of these books. I know there's one based off The Little Mermaid I really want to read, and I think there's some other ones. I know there's other ones. But I love, really love The Little Mermaid retellings. And so I definitely want to read the other ones if I enjoy this one just as much. So I'll be getting to this one later when I get back. And I will see you all later with some updates. Last night I did start Desperate Measures when I got home from Moe's. Which is very good by the way. I love Moe's. And I started this and got halfway through. So I only have about like the next half left. I could definitely finish this in no time today because today is the last day of this reading challenge. It ends at 6 p.m. Eastern. So it's still morning time. It's only 11, 12 in the morning. So I got plenty of time. I'm pretty sure I can read a couple of small books in that amount of time. So I'm going to continue reading Desperate Measures. I'm liking it so far. The only part I have an issue with is the whole daddy vibes. Jasmine keeps calling Jafar daddy and that just takes me out of the story a little bit. Because <laughs> he does not give off daddy vibes to me at all. He seems too young for that. He's not even like, he doesn't even have kids. He's not, I don't even know if he's old enough to have kids, is he? He probably is. But anyways. He does not give me daddy vibes when he, she calls him that. It just, it throws me off. And don't get me wrong, I, I don't mind a good, dark, um, steamy book where they do that. Like, for example, in Praise by Sarah Kate, I have no problem with that. Because he actually is a dad. And he's old enough. And he has a kid in that book. However, in this one, it just rubs me the wrong way. <laughs> So, yeah. This might not, this most likely won't be a five star. Maybe four star. I've been giving it a lot of four stars this month. It is about 10 minutes till four. So, final update on Desperate Measures. I just finished it. It actually got better. Even though I still wasn't crazy about some of the daddy references it continued throughout the whole book and I'm like even times when they weren't even in the bedroom and I'm like really so that bugged me a little bit however I did enjoy the last little bit of this book because Jasmine really comes into her own she finally stands up for herself and does what she needs to do so that's probably my favorite part of the whole book so I definitely for the most part definitely enjoyed it so this was for sure a four star because of the whole daddy issue. But now that it's over, I can move on and pick my final book of this readathon because there's only a couple hours left. So if I could find one more that's short, that would be great. So let's get ready and to spin again. I have the wheel all set to go. So we're gonna go ahead and spin. And we got new to you author. All right. I have some ideas I could do for that. And with only a couple hours left, I think that's doable. So after careful consideration, I picked my final book because I hopefully this doesn't take me two hours to actually read. However, there's not a lot of time left in the readathon. So I figured I'd go with something short and I think I could get through it. So I went with The Never King by Nikki St. Crow. It's a Peter Pan retelling, and I have not heard very good things about this one, unfortunately. However, it's a short book, you know, first of a series. So there's only like 195 pages, I think. Yeah, 195. So this I could probably get done in the last couple hours, I'm sure. So I'm going to give this a shot. I don't know if I'm going to like it because I read Never by Jessa Hastings 
this month, which is another Peter Pan retelling, and I DNF that one, and because I didn't, I heard didn't hear great reviews on that either, and I DNF that. So I'm a little bit worried when it comes to this one, but we will see what happens. And if I decide to DNF, I'll do that. I'd rather not. I hate DNFing books if I can help it. So we're gonna at least give it a shot. Don't know if I like it, but you know. It's short, so we'll see what happens with this one. I just finished The Never King like a few minutes ago. This was a pretty fast-paced read. I jumped into it with no expectations, thinking, you know, just going to be a great grand old time, nothing like, nothing heavy or anything like that, and it's exactly what I got. <laughs> It was a fast-paced, enjoyable Peter Pan retelling, and I definitely want to continue the series. I ended up giving this four stars. It wasn't anything mind-blowing to the point where it was absolutely amazing or anything like that, but it had an interesting storyline, so I went with it, and it was definitely smutty. I was expecting smut because I've heard there's a lot of it, and it definitely went there. <laughs> But it was fast-paced, enjoyable, nothing to write home about, but it was still a fun time, regardless. And I definitely would like to get the next one in the series just to see what happens next, because I'm curious. I want to know where they're going to go from here. I think the next one's called The Dark One, so I'll have to check that one out. But this was super fun, super light. Well, it has some dark undertones in the book, but it was like a light fluffy read for me because this this is nothing people will call this dark but to me it's not dark <laughs> it's just you know a good old time no worries kind of deal but i had fun with it and it is way past the time this readathon ended technically it ended at 6 p.m we are now after seven so this is definitely done this whole vlog is coming to a close so I hope you guys enjoyed watching everything I've read over the 72 hours in the reading nook, including Karina's gift to me, which was a great pick, Karina. So I'm very excited. I get the second book um, in that series that she gifted me tomorrow, and I am very excited for it because I want to know what's going to happen in that series. So this was so much fun. I hope you all had a great time with me. If you did, give me a huge thumbs up. If you want to see more bookish content from me, make sure you smash the subscribe button down below, and I'll see you all next time.